To use a calculator to evaluate trig functions, there are only three things to know. How to set the mode to degrees or radians, how to enter the constant pi if your angle is in radians, and the syntax the calculator expects for trig functions. I'm going to show short examples that involve these three concepts for these calculator types. I'll provide links to longer videos prepared by others in the description section below. We're going to find the sine of 30 degrees and the cosine of 5 pi over 6 radians using each of these tools. For most Texas Instruments calculators, set the degree or radian mode using the Mode button on the top row. Scroll down to Radians or Degrees, highlight the desired mode, and press the Enter key, then Clear. To find sine of 30 degrees, press the Sign button. The calculator displays the function name with the left parenthesis for us. We type 30 and close the parenthesis. Enter. The answer, 0.5, is displayed. If your answer was negative 0.988, then the calculator was in radian mode and told you the sine of 30 radians instead of the sine of 30 degrees. Now let's find the cosine of 5 pi over 6. We need to switch to radian mode. Mode, down, down, radians, enter, clear. Press cosine and then 5. Here's pi in blue above this exponent button. So to enter the constant pi, press the blue second button and then the exponent button. This is how you would enter any value that appears in blue above a button. So now we have 5 pi. Press the division button and then 6. Close the parenthesis, enter, and we get negative 0 0.866, which is an approximation of negative square root of 3 over 2. For most Casio calculators, the degree radian mode is set with a setup command, which is in yellow letters above the menu button. So press the yellow shift button and then the menu button to activate the setup feature. Scroll down to the angle option. The bottom line of the display shows the choices. In order, from left to right, the top row of F buttons corresponds to the choices. So here, degrees are chosen by pressing F1, and radians with F2. GRA stands for gradients. There are 100 gradients in a right angle, so 400 in a full circle. Not used much, and we won't mention it again. We want sine 30 degrees, so press F1 for degree mode, then exit to exit setup. Press the sign button. The Casio gives us a space after the function name instead of parenthesis. No problem. Let's enter 30 and press execute. We get our answer, 0 0.5. To get the cosine of 5 pi over 6 radians, we need to switch to radian mode. Shift, Setup, scroll down to Angle, F2 for radians. Exit. We'll need it in a second, so let's note that pi is in yellow above the EXP button. So to enter pi, we'll press the yellow shift button, then the EXP button. Now we're going to find cosine 5 pi over 6. For the Casio, we're going to have to be very careful with our parentheses. Press cosine, then 5, then pi, division, 6, execute, and we get the wrong answer. The calculator found the cosine of 5 pi, which is negative 1, and then divided that answer by 6. We need to use parentheses so it recognizes 5 pi over 6 as the argument for the cosine function. Cosine, open paren, 5 pi, division, 6, close paren, execute. Much better. Negative 0 0.866 is the approximate value of negative square root of 3 over 2. I think the takeaway is to always use parenthesis to be as clear and precise as possible to get the answer you expect. For the NumWorks calculator, set the angle mode in Settings, which is the lower right option. Scroll to it and press OK. Angle measure is the first option. Press either OK or cursor right to see the angle measure choices. 
scroll down to your choice, we'll start with degrees, and press OK. Scroll back to calculation mode and press OK. There are lots of modes. The NumWorks calculator can do a lot of things. Also, it's updated pretty often with new features, so your screen might not look exactly like this one. We'll start again with sine 30 degrees. When we press sine, we get a set of parentheses, so we type 30 and execute. NumWorks shows the answer as a fraction and as a decimal value. Nice. For cosine 5 pi over 6, we go to radian mode. Home. Scroll to Settings. OK. OK on Angle Measure. Scroll down to Radians. OK. Home. Scroll to Calculation. OK. Cosine. 5. NumWorks has a dedicated key for pi right here. Division. 6. Execute. Again, NumWorks gives us both the fractional answer, negative square root of 3 over 2, and also the decimal approximation. Excel doesn't have a degree or radian mode. All of its trig functions expect an argument in radians. To use degrees, Excel has provided a function called radians that converts degrees to radians. So, to find sine 30 degrees, type equals sine, open parenthesis, radians, open parenthesis, 30, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, enter, and we get our expected answer, 0 0.5. For cosine 5 pi over 6, type equals cosine, open parenthesis, 5, we need to use an explicit multiplication symbol in Excel to multiply 5 times pi, and that's the asterisk, or shift 8. Excel has a built-in function that returns the value pi, named pi. So type pi, open and close parenthesis, because the pi function doesn't need an argument, forward slash for division, 6, close parenthesis, and enter. And the answer is negative 0.866. For the calculator built into Windows, make sure it's in scientific mode by clicking these three lines and choosing scientific. Degree and radian mode are set with this button. Click the button to cycle through the choices. We'll start with degree mode. The trig functions are all in this drop-down list named trigonometry. But with this calculator, we need to enter the argument first. So to find sine 30 degrees, enter 30. Then trig drop-down and click Sign. The answer, 0 0.5, is displayed. For cosine 5 pi over 6, we need to go to radian mode. Click 5, times, pi has its own button here, division, 6. Now we need to press the equal sign to evaluate this expression, about 2.618, which is 5 times pi divided by 6. Now click cosine from the trig drop-down negative 0 0.866, the answer we expected. The sample problems in TR-16X should give you enough practice to be confidently proficient for homework or a test. Try them all out using whatever calculators or tools you expect to use. In the next video, TR-17, I'll cover the most common real-life use of elementary trigonometry.